So I'm just letting this thing float on top. I'm not putting any downward pressure on it whatsoever. And uh, that way you just get a little better job. And I'm using 40 grit, but I'm surprised it's not loaded up yet. Usually that happens when you sand new filler. Okay, you get the idea what I'm doing here, so I'm just going to turn the camera off and continue uh, sanding. It started raining on me out there while I was using the pneumatic sander with 40 grit. And now I brought it in, and I, had a, I have a pretty much hole roughed out, but I got 80 grit on my hand. And I'm just going to kind of make sure it's all shaped pretty good. I'm not going to put much pressure on it, just kind of work it on the pan. Get things the way I like it, and then I'm going to put some of this on it. Yeah, it's been a warm, warm winter here so far. The grass almost needs mowing in a couple spots. We've had so much rain, and I think yesterday it was in the upper 50s and rained. And, uh, it's just been crazy the weather this winter. All right, let me uh, just get this sanded out here. And get a coat of filler on it, and then I'm going to start straightening the uh, body on the car. And then I want to have this ready for paint because I think Monday is supposed to be a nice enough day to where I can paint outside. And I just carry this, you'll see when I get to it, I'll just carry it outside, spray it, carry it back in, let it pack up. So you can see the 40 grit sand marks, that's why I like to go over it with 80 before I put that on and then I'll do that with the 80 and then with 150 and then possibly with 400. I probably do it with 150 prime it with sandable primer and then then 400 it. But anyway I'm just gonna be doing this annoying sanding so I'm not gonna bore you with it. I've been hand sanding this for about 20 minutes now just kind of like this. As you saw it, I got a low spot right here. And uh, I've gone through into the metal in a lot of places, but I don't feel the metal high yet. So I got to put a little bit extra filler just in this area right here. I'm going to use the mar glass. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to coat the whole thing because if I just coat it here and then sand this, and then I take it off over here, and it just looks funny. So it's just, I find it just easier just to coat what I need to first, you know, to build it up and then just coat the whole thing with a thin layer and then I'll sand the whole thing out with 80 grit, probably by hand because this is going to be pretty close to a finish when I'm done. You can kind of, let me see if I can show you. Oops, sorry I bumped the camera, but see there and there, that's where it's low where it hasn't sanded any. And see how that's full of dust? You've got to get that dust out before you put another coat of filler on it. I take them out and blow them off with compressed air. If you don't have an air compressor, you need to take some wax and grease remover and a solvent or something and, and wipe them off. See, a paper towel doesn't even really take it all out. There's still, still some in the crack. So you really need to get all that out. If you don't, your filler is not going to stick. You got to get all the dust out. But anyway, it looks pretty good. I think uh, I'll, I'll take it out and blow it off. And we'll put one more coat of filler, let it overnight. I had to put a dishwasher in today, so that's why I'm getting kind of a late start today. Just in case if you're interested in what the consistency of this stuff looks like. And I mix it up really good in the can before I use it, just without hardener because the the resins tend to get float to the top the heavy stuff goes to the bottom but that's it's like chopped fiberglass and with the and with the resins and stuff it, it's pretty strong stuff i like it anyway let me uh get it mixed up and we'll slap some on i think that'll do the job i think once that's sanded out i'll probably hit it with like i say with this just just do it with this, not use this, and uh, you know, just kind of block it out with this, and then maybe go right to a filler primer. This this mark glass sanded out surprisingly smooth. I was surprised at how you know I might not have to use a bondo type filler for you know. Usually this 
the stuff is really strong and it's kind of porous so you get little pits and nicks in it and, and uh, you got to really almost use like I don't like spot putty but if I have put a thin film of Bondo on it I will and I mean thin like just smear just enough to fill the pits you'll still see mostly green and then I'll just sand it but I'm, I'm gonna wait and see how it looks when I'm done it might sand out nice I was surprised like I say how well this stuff sands out. I just did the final sand on the dirt glass and it looks really nice there's a couple little bumps down here but this is underneath the car kind of you know as this panel is bolted on like that and you don't see it and for the fuss there's one there and one there right there and there for the fuss of repairing it that just doesn't worth it and uh you know like i say you don't see this under here and this is all got little rust pits i'm going to put a little I'm gonna thin some of this down and put it on those rust pits so it fills them and then i'm gonna and i'm probably gonna hit that bare metal with some uh metal etching primer first i'm not going to get it on this plastic here this bar or dura glass this fiberglass stuff and i'm gonna just gonna you can see the little tiny pits the stuff just doesn't sand out smooth so i'm just gonna like i say thin this and put on the thinnest film I possibly can on there. You can see the metal coming through. And here you can't see the metal through the filler, but there's other places you can you can see the metal through the filler, you know, in a lot of places like there and there and quite a number of places. But anyway, I'm gonna get that final coat of filler on it and let it overnight dry, give it a sand out with some 400 hand sand it and then I'm gonna or uh, 80 grit hand sand the filler and then I'm gonna 400 hand sand it and I'm gonna prime it up and hopefully paint it. Monday is supposed to be the warmest day they're predicting for a while. I layer a fill of bond, filler bondo on it now that'll fill all the little pits you can if you really look you can see where all the pits just really filled in nicely with the bondo and I'll just sand that by hand and uh, then it's ready to prime and paint. I did put some, a little bit, there are some pits on this surface, which you don't see this surface here. It's under the car, but there are some pits in it. So some deep ones right there and right there. So I kind of put some filler body bondo in them and I'll sand them out. And uh, then that'll... That'll look nice, you know, when somebody's under the car or something. And uh, in the back part, when I go to straighten that out, I gotta scrape off a bunch of undercoating first. So I might uh, go do that. That's why it looks so rough. That's actually undercoating on there and stuff. I've been hammering away on the back here where it's been. I got most of this. This was this was this whole cross member was pulled this way, so I straightened it down. And, uh, you know, I got most of the damage out of there, but it almost looks like somebody backed into a pole right here from the damage here on this. You know, it just kind of goes like that right there, exaggerating what it looks like. But you can see the frames hogged in, or the, not the frame, this is part of the body. But it even is like that. So anyway, I'm going to... I got uh, most of the bend out, but I gotta hammer it back up some clamp, get a couple C clamps and clamp that to the to the car to act as a dolly and I'm gonna hammer that back up to where it's supposed to be. Whoops, slamming my camera to the metal into the camera, but I think that'll I'm I'm just gonna get that straight across and even so that the valence just bolts up flush if it's got a little damage there i don't really care the only way i'd be able to repair that is take the bumper off the car and i'm not going to the work of doing that it's just not going to happen so i'm gonna try and get this straightened back up probably if i did take the bumper off and hammer that out everything would go nice and straight but i can get it to where you know i mean it looked good before and this thing was all you know, this stuff was all bent up pretty bad, so I think we can uh, 
get that looking pretty good without taking the bumper off. I think we can get that good enough, and then I'll just paint this. And I got to scrape this most of the stuff under and just scrape. I can take a putty knife or a razor knife and scrape most of that off. And the same here, there's a lot of undercoating on there and that's been over spray painted over like when I painted this part of the car probably didn't mask this and the, when I painted this I just painted this in here and uh, over the rust proofing just you know to help it out save it which it looks like it's done because it's still there and it's in good shape still other than you know it looks rough from the undercoating because the undercoating's rough but a lot of this car still has its original undercoating on it as you've seen in past videos where I've shown around the underneath and even in this video series you've seen underneath here. There you can see how I clamp the, the cables up in there or the clamp the that steel up in there and then I'm just tapping this trying to tap that back up into place. I got it most of the way, it's 90%, but you can see that it's kind of like that. This is this way because it, uh, you know, it looks like, again, like somebody backed into a pole or something. There we go, that's about as good as it's going to get. And I'm going to take my uh, scraper here and try and scrape all the loose stuff off here. And I'm going to paint this. And I'm going to paint this. I'm going to paint all this with Rust-Oleum. This I'll paint with acrylic enamel with the hardener. And I'll wait until I paint the valence panel. And I'll just paint this with a brush. But after the paint. And I'll paint up in here too. Above it here. So it doesn't rust. But I, I think that was that's a pretty nice finish on there. So I think that's going to get the, the good... I don't know, I might paint it with Rust-Oleum, but this is definitely, you know, I mean, you don't see this. This is behind the valance, but I want to protect it. There's one of those things for the air shocks, but it's just like old undercoating, and I don't know if I can peel it. Some of the undercoating that's still on there is still stuck pretty darn good. I'm gonna, I think I can get that a little cleaner. You can see when I dig the undercoating off, it's actually clean metal under there. But I'm not going to work at digging undercoating that's still on there pretty good. This what I just dug off, the undercoating I just dug off, it's kind of rough looking. That's It's not really, may look like it's rusty but it's just undercoating on there same with this so anyway that'll all get some rust-oleum on it i think i'll just do this with rust-oleum too and that'll be fine because you know it's you can see the it doesn't show up let me see here get you out you know it doesn't show up down in there or anything I'm holding the camera right against the body of the car looking down in there, so you don't see that at all. Do you even yeah, this this is the the body of the car up here. So I think that'll be fine with some rust oleum. Yeah, I gotta put my tools away and clean up the mess too, but I'm gonna leave this out and scrape it after I put my tools away. Now for a little scraping and cleaning. I'm not, you know. This is my summer cruiser. I'm not doing a thousand point show car or anything. So I'm just kind of, that's all undercoating in there. And I'm going to leave that. It's not loose, but I'm going to scrape all the loose stuff off I can and then slap some Rust-Oleum on it. And again, like I say, this is, you know, I've owned this car 45 years now. It's my summer cruiser and the car that I just keep because it's my first car you know I restore all these cars but I just keep this one and rarely do much to it so that's why it's getting some TLC this winter and uh but I'm gonna clean it up enough to where you know I can paint it up and protect it so it doesn't rust if it's you know out in the rain or anything it's actually pretty hard to hold this up 
where it belongs and uh, video at the same time, but I just wanted to make sure everything kind of fit good. And uh, from what I can see, no complaints. It looks really good. Very happy with it. I think that'll look fine though. That all fits nicely there where I straighten it up. Fits the rest of the car body. This little bracket here that holds the bottom corner of the valance on. There's one on each side. That one was missing. Well, the part of it that bolted the chassis was there. It was like broke off right here. So this part was missing. And I got to make another one. And I wanted to see how it was shaped. Because this one looked like it had a little bend there. But it was mostly straight. And uh, it did have a bend there. Because I screwed the panel up here just with a few screws to fit that and I'm taking it back down so I could show you the thing but that will fit just right right there like that everything fits and matches those valances as far as where it hangs out on the bumper and everything so I got to make another um, bracket just like this one here so I can bolt the other side on. I think they'll both be about the unless the chassis you know or the cross members just slightly different on that side which I doubt it looks pretty much all the same but that's kind of the shape and this bolts on like so. so hopefully it'll work on this side too so I'll make another one in fact I might just fasten it there and just see how it fits Looks like the frame might be tweaked up a little bit there. I'll tweak that down if that's the case. Yeah, just kind of Mickey Mouse holding it up there. That looks pretty good. So I think I'll make another one just now like you can kind of see better what that looks like. So it does have a little bit of shape to it. This was a piece I took off the other side. I'm just giving this thing its final little hand sanding today. Get it ready for paint. Hoping to paint it tomorrow. I'm going to try and get it primed up yet today. It's cold out today. It's only in the low, it's like 31 out. So I guess for January that's pretty good. But for what it's been lately in the 40s and 50s, that's cold. And another thing too, I went and bought more glass beads for my glass cabinet yesterday at Harbor Freight. And the last time I bought glass beads for that was when I was working on the Galaxy. Like in the early stages pre-pandemic and I paid $24 for 50 pound bucket of glass beads. Yesterday at Harbor Freight a 50 pound bucket of glass beads was $79 plus tax. So I left Harbor Freight spending over ninety dollars i also bought a quart of oil to change oil on my air compressor but yeah it's just ridiculous i guess glass is it's you know really has gone up in price so everywhere it's not just the media but everything to work on cars is just tripled in price as fast it just blows my mind anyway let me get this sanded out here and uh then I can uh, get it primed up. This is all uh, pretty much all ready for primer. Feels really, really good. It's going to look a thousand times better than what it did before. So anyway, I'm just going to wipe it down with a little bit of this stuff. I already did it once. I'm doing it a second time. This just ensures that there's no waxes or oils or greases or anything left on it. You know, the air tools have oil it. You know, on the compressor, you get a little moisture and oil will come out from the from the air tools, and uh, so this just kind of ensures that it's all oils and everything are off. Now I'm going to prime this with with uh, metal etcher, or, uh, the bare metal on the underside and these edges of metal etching primer, and then I'm going to uh, prime this filler with a filler primer and then I'll 400 sand it. This is the one primer I'm going to use to, sorry I'm bashing the tripod there, this is the one primer I'm going to use and 
and this is the etching primer I'm going to use on the bare metal. So let me get those in the shaker. This one's going to really need some serious shaking because it's a thick primer and you know you just really need to shake it good. So let me get these in the paint shaker and then we'll do some spraying. The primer's on. I'm going to let that, that's where I had to lay on the, the metal etching primer was mostly on this side. This side here really didn't need much other than a few of the edges. There is some bare metal, but it's not the sandable primer will get that. And there is a little mist of the etching primer on it. All right, I'm going to let that dry an hour or so, and then we'll get the sandable primer in the shaker and put a coat of that on it. Well, I'm just going to put the sandable on this side. This side, I'm just leaving that's finished. That's as far as I'm going with this side. There we go, all primed up. Looks really nice. I'll give that a 400 and then we'll blow the gloss black on it. And this side, like I say, is just the metal etch primer. I think it's gonna, it looks a million times better than what it did. This is what I'm gonna paint it with. It's gloss black, a little smoothie, the hardener, some fast dry enamel. Because it's a small panel and it's cold out, I'm gonna spray it outside. I primed it outside, but the smell from the primer evaporating is pretty powerful in here. That's why I put my ventilator on. I just 400 sanded it out. Looks amazing. I'm going to uh, dust everything off and uh, get some paint mixed up here. And we gotta get the black all mixed up here. Throw that in the paint shaker. There's the first coat, tack coat. Painted both sides. Let it tack up for about 15-20 minutes. We'll go out and put another coat on it. I took the camera out on the tripod to video spraying it and then I forgot to turn the camera on. I pushed the wrong button. I'm not used to using that GoPro. But anyway, we'll get let this tack up for a while and we'll go out and put another coat on it. It's only in the upper 30s right now, maybe 38, 39 degrees, but I think that's going to look good. We carry that inside now. There we go, all painted and ready to go back on the car. I'm not going to put it back on the car for a while. It's actually dry to the touch now. I'm not going to touch this. It's still soft, but I can touch this. I sprayed the back after the fact. And... Uh, so I, after I painted this side, I painted this side because I still had some 
paint left in the gun. So I put two coats on everything except for this side. I put three on. I had a little paint left and I thought well, I'll put a third coat on and then figured I'd empty the gun out on the back and ran out kind of down at that end. But that's the back side and it looks fine. You'd never even know I ran out of paint in the gun. But yeah, that looks like candy. It came out perfect. Very happy with it. Not all warped or bent looking or anything. And uh, I'm going to wait to put it on because I'm going to repaint the other rear panels here. I'm going to pop these ones off and paint them too because the paint's cracked on them. And the backup light wiring plugs are behind that one. So... In order to get these ones off, I have to have that one off to unplug and plug the wiring back in when I put these ones back on. And this one here was the worst of the two rear ones when I made them. And uh, my friend Dave, and he's he had an Impala, 59 Impala four-door flat top, you know, with a flat roof. And he sold it, and he got new... When it was shipped to him, the the rocker or the valance panels got smashed from the way the guy had it lashed down on the trailer and the strap smashed the panels. So he got new ones. And uh, so you can kind of see what a new one looks like. And I'm going to... Um, doesn't have the hole for the backup light cut in it because backup lights were optional. And uh, somewhere I have a, a template for the backup lights, and if I can't find it, I'll just make one from that panel. But this is the side, the panel for this side. So I'm going to cut the hole, make the holes for the backup light, bead blast it, and prime and paint this. And I'm going to just sand the other one out down to the bare fiberglass that I made it out of this one which is a little better I think than the other one but anyway we're gonna I'm gonna refinish them because uh, I painted these in lacquer back when I did them in the early 80s I did these probably in 80 or 81 the rest of the car I painted most all the car in 82 I painted it in in sections and I think I have video on my YouTube with photos where I was painting the rear quarters. Painted the front clip and then I took the doors off. I think I took the hood off when I painted the front. Took the doors off and painted them and in the jams and then I painted the rear quarters and the white. But yeah I have painted it in my dad's backyard under a shade tree. And so yeah it's a 41 year old paint job that was done backyard paint job that was done under a shade tree. It's held up pretty darn good. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm not going to repaint the whole car. I do have a brand new recorder panel, new old stock that I have. And I'll tell a story on finding that. Maybe I'll do a yapping video. But this rear quarter was smashed when I bought the car and a little bit of damage on the door. But mostly the rear quarter panel was caved in. And I bumped it out and straightened it out the best I could, you know, for how old I was back then. I guess I was 21 when I did this. Or Actually, I did that when I was 17. I fixed the quarter panel when I first got the car. And painted, you know, and I painted parts of the car and stuff. But I completely repainted the whole car in 82. But, yeah, I was thinking of putting that new rear quarter panel on, but... I think I'm just going to leave the rest of the car the way it is. It's the way I did it back in the day. It has, it's, you know, it's not perfect, but hey, it's the way I did it back then, and it's still holding up pretty good. So I'm kind of thinking I'll leave it just as is. And this back here, I'm just going to brush paint that with some Rust-Oleum, some satin black Rust-Oleum. It's just the frame cross. Remember, you don't even see it. The valance panel covers it. And that'll protect it, keep it from rusting, keep it looking nice. Actually, when I purchased this car, it was really good condition. It had, it was rusted out here and a little bit right here and right here on both fenders. 
and the spare tire hole was rusted out because this sits in there like a station wagon. You've seen it in the trunk upright. That was the only rust in the car when I bought it. The rest of it was it had dents. You know, I had a couple like golf balls or something hit the quarter. It had several dents in this quarter panel. Um, and this other quarter panel, like I say, in the little bit of the back door. It looked like they hit a garage or something going in. Or it was pretty caved in from about here to about here. And uh, I mean caved in like that far. It was pretty badly smashed and the door was just slightly right in here. Other than that, there, you know, that was about the extent of the damage on the car when I bought it. Was uh, you know the rust, and the, when I bought it in 1978, so yeah, I had it a long time, 46, 45 years or whatever. I'm gonna end this video here, and I'll make another video. I'll show that quarter panel. I've shown it in past videos. I do believe the rear quarter that I got for this car was in the in the trunk of a car I was stripping, a 59 Impala that I was stripping of parts, and like I say, I'll yep about that in a future video i'm going to end this one here so if you like the video you can definitely hit that like button it certainly helps you can subscribe to my channel by hitting that 348 engine icon that pops up there and i appreciate you watching my videos again